and if we put it in, bam, done. How awesome is that? Hey guys, today we're going to be doing the Buster Sword electronics. So this is version 2 of my Buster Sword iterations. So obviously the electronics would be for the LEDs on an off switch and the battery that goes inside these slots. So there's going to be two batteries and the batteries that I use here are Sony NPFW50. Those are the uh, batteries that I use within my cameras. That's actually the camera that I'm recording right now. Actually, I'm wrong. This is A7S3 that I'm recording on and the batteries that goes in here are for A7S2, A7R2. Uh, but yeah, they're really good batteries and with these batteries and these Bluetooth controllers, these LEDs that we'll be using, which is these ones, they're going to be able to last for like two days straight, powered on consistently without being turned off. So it's a major upgrade from V1. V1 was using A23 batteries, which was these. And these did terribly. These would die within like two hours. So, and these are not rechargeable. So it was very, very uh, big waste of money compared to rechargeable ones. Anyway, so for starters, we are going to get these material diffusion uh, pieces and then you have smooth pieces as well that go on top of them like that but to start things off let's uh, paint the diffusion uh, areas here at the top I'm gonna use a little sponge here and I've got black spray paint now I am in the bedroom however uh, you just need to hang this over a bin or somewhere where spray paint won't hit. You can do this outside, but I'm just going to do it into the bin so you guys won't see it. But basically, I'm just going to be spraying it at like this distance, like that, into the bin. Just one second, and you'll see. So, I literally just got that. And then, once we've got that layer, we can slightly touch this material diffusion just so it covers the top area, the protruded areas of the material. So this will actually block light where the LEDs shine from. I'm gonna actually, yeah, this is, <laughs> um, as usual, my place of work is very, very weird on the bed. But yep, that's my, basically, my workbench, I guess my bed. One second, guys, I'm gonna spray a bit more on the corner, on the edge, instead. And I'm doing this now before the electronics, so that whilst I'm doing the electronics, this will dry and be ready for gluing. You know what might, might actually be useful to use a cotton bud. So I've got some cotton buds here as well. So just like that. And the same thing, I'm gonna just spray some black spray paint on one. And I'm gonna use this to get into the edge of this outer circle. Oh, I forgot I need to spray like a lot because cotton absorbs paint. So I've got a bit of an excess drip and just on the outer circle so that light doesn't seep out that makes sense okay that's one pretty much done yep that's good to me let's move on to the next one and I where should I put this so next circle which is basically the other side and don't put pressure on this because if you do you'll get inside the crevices, which is not what I want to do. The point is to block out the light on the very top of the surface, not the whole thing. That's why I'm not spray painting this whole thing. I need a bit more spray paint on the corner of this thing that's acting as a sponge. It's not really a sponge. This is like styrofoam, <laughs> is it? No, it's like clear styrofoam, whatever it is. But it's basically doing the job of what I need it to do. You don't need too much either, and then back to the cotton bud. Spray paint the cotton bud. And I'm not going to be trying to film things that are already done, so I'm only going to do this once, and then I'm going to do the other side off camera, so things aren't repeating for you guys. Okay, yep, that's one slot done, so I'm just going to basically leave that to dry and do the other side. 
Okay, so both the diffusion material are painted and diffused. So now we can put them away and let them dry. In the meantime, we can start with the wiring. I will start with the switch. So, first thing we want to do is have a look at this DPDT switch. DPDT, I think that's what they're called. So you can see they have six pins here. Three on one side, three on the other. And there's a lot of combinations here, but the combination that I want is for it to be for it to pass continuity when it's pushed in and to disconnect the continuity when it's pushed out. So very, very simple. So I've got a multimeter here and it is in continuity mode here. So you can see this little one here. Can you see it guys here? Um, yeah, where it's pointing at. There you go. Okay, so connect uh, as far as I remember that in one of the corners so one goes to one corner and just to give it a quick test that is doing this job so just touch it yep and now we want to grab I believe it's the middle pin so where is there it is oh I don't need to I don't need to crimp them if that's the right word not crimp crocodile clip them so basically I just need to touch the other pin that I think it might be touching it might be passing the continuity through so I thought it would be the middle one but it's not so let's push the on and off switch push it in oh because that was in an off state I believe and then the middle one okay see so it is these ones and if we touch any other pins let's see what happens nothing 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 so I'm right so yep it is this corner and then just to double check it, press off. Yep, no continuity now. And continuity. Sweet. Okay, so I'm gonna solder wires onto it before I lose um, track of which pin does what. So let's get my soldering iron and turn it on. Okay, so let's strip a wire. So this the, is a white wire, and that is gonna represent our ground. So strip. I'm gonna estimate how much wire I'm gonna need so from around here I'm gonna so it's gonna go to around here I believe wait make sure you guys can see where am I so so from here to around here so I'll cut it actually I'll give me some excess room so yeah and then another of the exact same length the other one away and then strip all corners not corners all ends that's done and get the buster sort out and then got my soldering iron ready and I've got some solder tin whatever you want to call it and put some on the wire, where are we? So, then the other wire, and then on the actual pin itself. Now, do not overheat this pin because this is plastics. So. Gonna put some tin on first, and then ready for the wire itself. Just one wire. Looks good to me. 
and let's give it a test so con uh, connect this to the con uh, continuity meter volt meter and the other side wait a minute it's not connected where's the other side black that's good off Perfect. All right, so now we can insert it. Let's get the meter away so we have some space. I'm going to turn the soldering iron off just for now. And let me show you how we're going to put the switch in. So make sure you guys can see. The switch goes in here. So you see this is the wire that's connected. So we're going to put it in so the wires that are soldered on go up here yeah, so let's get the wires and the way I'll do this is I'll get some of my tweezers I think unless this actually no this doesn't need tweezers so I modified this model since last time so now it goes in very easy and the way these this is held in place this switch is purely through friction so there's no need for any glue actually glue would be a very bad idea for this switch especially However, pushing it in, in place, is a bit trickier than taking it out. So once it's in, that's it, pretty much. I'm just gonna use it to, for better alignment. There we go, see, now it's going in. Perfect, nice friction. And again, I'm gonna give a, a go with my voltmeter, actually, continuity meter, blah, 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 whatever you wanna call it. Just to check that it's doing its job correctly, so. Continue to meter here, one side, and black on the other side. Perfect. Now right, we can put that away and move on to the next part. Okay, so let's start with the SP110 Bluetooth controllers. So let's get them disconnected. Disconnect. And again, I'm only going to do this for one of these. The rest of it, you guys can just copy for what I've done in the first video, for the first controller. So basically, we just want to open it up. All right, so I've got these tweezers here, clippers, and we're just going to clip the thin side. So the thin side is where you're safe to go. On the fat side is where the actual Bluetooth controller lays. So don't do that side. Where you see this logo, the QR code, that's where you can clip. can cut basically the only reason we're doing this is so that we get access to the actual chip the solder points and that it, so it would actually fit into the sword itself otherwise it just be way too big and just wouldn't fit the other side yeah don't focus on just one side you need to do both sides and easy and now that we've got the chip out throw the trash out and then we need to get the solder joint and these connectors removed so to do that I've covered this in the previous other videos of uh, how to use this controller but let's just do it now anyway since I'm doing this whole thing so to make this easier I put more solder so they all solidify together in a way if that makes sense can you guys see? Should be able to see. Let's go in the middle more. Okay, so you can see I'm putting solder on these four pins. Quite a lot. And that will help remove that will help move them all together as a unit almost. If it's struggling, then the, we might have to do some cutting. Just be careful not to cut these pins because if you do, it might actually 
detach from the solder joint and remove the joint itself and if it does you're going to be left with uh, soldering to the back side which is a bit annoying. So I'm going to remove this plastic so that I can I have an easier time of removing these pins. And you can see one of them is already off. The other pin. The yeah, other pin still on. The other pin is off. We've got two more pins left. There we go, got them all off now, and just need to them those pins up. And now, for the on and off switch, the power source, no, 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 not the on and off switch, this is the power source. So we get this one off as well. Okay, we've got the top off. Make sure you guys can see, I'll keep going out of frame slightly. Quite difficult because this is a very zoomed in shot. I'm just trying to move the plastic before I get onto the soldering, but I think it's about time I do the soldering now anyway, so we'll do that. Once you do get the solder on, you want to get the. You're gonna want to start pulling it away. So, holding it with one hand, holding the pen with one hand, whilst pushing the solder away from the chip, almost. That usually works for me. There we go. See, it's moving. It's moving. It's moving. Come on. Try not to get the other components because you don't want to stab them. Can be a bit tricky. See, it's quite tricky, quite awkward. Let's go back to it. Let's see what's going on. What's giving us trouble? I'm gonna move the plastic. Oh, it's actually disconnected at the end one now, so that's good. Let's cut this off. There we go. So now we've just got these two pins. I never know what, why there's three pins here. There's uh, I only use two, which is a negative and positive. Okay, so just two left. So where are we? Can you guys see? Yep, you can here. Okay. More solder, just to make it flow easier, and then grab the pin and carefully pull it. Not too much, you don't want it splattering. There we go. And then last one. There we go. That's all of them done. Let's check it. Oh no, it's not off. No. What was off, but it's not. I'm gonna clean it up with a bit more solder. Make sure you guys can see somehow. These pins feel like they're still in there, which is unusual. Did I clip them off by accident rather than pull them out? The best way to check is to put more solder on. in there. Doesn't matter too much though, we can just put uh, the power source on top as long as it's not touching any other pins. You can check that. That's oh, there we go, you see? See it is coming out. Which is good because that means we can grab it. I think. <laughs> Let's put more solder on. That should uh, 
make it float even more and we can push it out from this side downwards yep there we go I think it's out now anyway I won't bother too much with cleaning this up it doesn't have to be perfect anyway looks a bit messy it's far from perfect but what am I saying it's messy as hell but who cares the point is that it works well I believe it will work Anyway, let's put that aside and I'm going to do the other one and I'll come back to you guys. Okay, I know I'm moving between different parts, but they all will come together eventually. Anyway, so this is the DC 5.1 by 2.1, I believe, connector. Anyway, we need to strip this off the outer rubber. So I've got a Stanley knife here, Stanley blade. I need to be very careful here so that you don't hurt yourself. I like to do it like this. how you cut and you see we want to just strip the metal so we just got the metal revealed okay. if you get a bit of resistance do stop and check why it's resisting why it's not cutting then you can start moving to the sides I think be very careful so you don't hurt yourself or cut yourself. But other than that, it's not too difficult getting this uh, plastic off. I'm going to remove more because it can't be too thick in that sense so I'm going to remove here as well ok we can see some of the red wire so that is the positive which goes on the inside which is the inside pin By the way, this is not me telling you what to do, this is just me showing you how I do this process. So don't exactly think that this is a an exact guide, this is just a rough outline of how I do it. to resolder them anyway. annoying oh shit see I cut them off anyway but that's fine Which one did I just cut off? Okay, so that is a negative. Okay, so now we've got that. We can just throw this off, throw this out. Okay, so this actually DC input will be going in here. However, 
it is too tight now that is by design it's supposed to be friction fit but I want it a little bit looser so I'm gonna drill it a little bit so let's see which one this is if it fits right through then it's then we want a bigger one this is 6.5 seven okay seven is about right I think so 6.5 fits right through nope so we want a seven and I'll show you how I'm gonna do this so seven doesn't fit through hold on a second okay so I've got a drill here with that seven millimeter drill bit and I'm not gonna go in I'm gonna reverse it like that so not like not not this way reverse Just a very, very minor clearance. And how do we feel about that? Do we want to go more? Because now what I could do is I could uh, use a soldering iron to melt on the outside. But I think I would probably, I'd rather go a bit further than that. So let's try 7.5. Okay, 7.5. This also depends on your DC input. 7.5, reverse. Five, that should be perfect. Yeah, and that, see, that's a bit too loose actually. How are we on the other side? Okay, that's fine. Let's just double check how it would be. Yeah, this would be perfect. So now, I want to make sure before I put super glue or anything here to hold it in place, I'm going to solder new wires on it that are perfect. So let's get. I'm going to mimic these wires. That's ground, so I'm going to mimic that as white. So where's my white wire? Get my soldering iron turned on. Actually, I like to wrap it around that. So these, this port, this DC input, will also cha charge the batteries. So it also it powers the LEDs if you have it on for 24-7 continuous display and it also charges those batteries. So I'm just going to cut this off guys and just going to memorize it before I lose track of it. See I lost track of it already because I moved it slightly. Is the loose track off. You know what? I'm not going to wrap it around fully. I'm just going to solder it on now. But as far as I remember, these DC input uh, connectors, they have an issue with my soldering solder wire. So let's see what happens. Then I can cut off the excess. Oh no, this seems alright. I think it's not the wire that's the problem. I think it's the connector, connector itself, the pin, the crimp on the pin. That's why if I wrap it around, it will make a nice uh, grip around the wire rather than this pin itself. You know, I'm not gonna hold it more than that. I think that's fine as it is. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it like that. Just let it cool down for a second. And then cut off this excess. Where are you? Can, guys, guys can see it. Okay, yep, yeah, that's good. And then let's get the other wire, which is the red wire. Okay, so the reason why I've got a longer one is so that we can actually feed this wire from here at the back to one of these holes so that we can connect this to the back pins of these from the other side 
so well early so let's get this wrap it around just a little bit not too much actually hold on a second And now for the solder. Looks that good. Yep. So now it's ready to be uh, placed in here and um, fixated in place. So let's just check the other side first that is nice and clear because obviously I drilled into here. So let's clear this up quickly. Can just do that with that. Not a big deal. Yeah, pretty much done. And then again, flip over again. I'm gonna Check it a few times to make sure it's got clearance and that it's nice here. Could be a bit deeper actually. Should I make it a bit deeper? No, I think that's fine actually. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I've got some hot glue here and I'm just gonna put some hot glue on the outside edges of it. That's all I need really. Yeah. So, and I've got clear glue. So I'm gonna just back out a little bit and I'm gonna apply it and just gonna push it on. And as soon as it drops down, push it in place because it quickly, quickly warps. Oh, okay. Right and before I finalize it, let me just check it on the other side. Looks good. Okay, actually I'm gonna double check that it works correctly with another DC connector. All right, so I have one here, and let's just connect it from the other side before I put some more hot glue gun on. So it will go in here, obviously. And will I get the wire? Okay, here's the wire. And here is that. So yeah, the bear is the ground. I've got the colors mixed up. And then let's do red to the white. So ignore the colors, but basically it's working. It's the colors of this uh, male connector, that's a bit weird. Anyway, so I'm gonna put a bit more hot glue on on, on the outside. We'll keep the wires neat and tidy as well. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'll leave it like that. And I'm gonna turn my hot glue gun off for now, otherwise it's gonna make a mess. Onto the other side, we are ready for the battery pins. So the batteries are gonna go on the other side like this and the battery pins are basically going to go in these there's little slots here pin holes are here so and I got a this is paper basically paper clips I think and I use these for my battery pins so I've got a bit of pliers here and so I like to cut I like to slice what well, not slice just like bend it so it's flat there we go and that just clips off just like that so you see we've got a square and now check with the calipers that it is one millimeter uh, one centimeter and then fold it until it snaps and then we're going to fold it in half so it's five millimeters on each side basically yep there we go so we've got basically a right angle here in a way you can see and now we can shove this in remember so that the right angle goes on the outside because there's obviously two pins so one pin goes like that and the other pin goes like that that's the point so let's go back to autofocus 
And let's check the other side. And basically the battery needs to fit in. And there we go, that looks good to me. So repeat that for all the pins. And then we're gonna do a voltage check. And when these batteries are fitted in, they, they stay there pretty nicely. So it's good that to have these batteries basically permanently in there. And then you can charge it with the DC connector from the mains. Just in case you guys missed it, how I insert it, basically I hold this. So let me just go over it one more time. Snap it so it's one centimeter in length and then fold it 90 degrees at five millimeters on each side so it's basically in half. So then it goes in. And it's gonna be pretty loose at the moment, but don't worry, we will fix that in place when we solder it in place. There you can see the pins are there. There we go. And if we look from the front, this is how they look here. So now we want to make sure that the battery actually goes in them correctly. If they don't look straight, you can adjust them with the pliers before you shove the battery in. Okay, so the pins look pretty straight to me, so we can just go in here to put the battery in. Okay, once the battery feels like it's fully inserted, now we can do a voltage test. Try not to touch the wrong terminals together. Otherwise, it will completely drain the battery instantly, and then you'll have to recharge it. Worst case scenario, you'll uh, kill the battery. Uh, I haven't had a, I haven't killed the battery actually through this method at all, but it is a precaution. So I am on volt voltage, not continuity. And if we get touch the pins, you can see it's 8.2 volts, so it's correct. Okay, so all four pins are inserted, both batteries inserted. I remember the positive is on this side and this side, and this is the DC connector that's going from from here to here so and we want that to be connected to the positive the red to the positive and the white to the negative so let's get them trimmed up actually let's start with that shall we so that can be roughly around there and just reveal the pin reveal the wire same here Okay, now we've got it. So now we need another wire. And this is gonna branch off into two places actually. Do we want any slack? Let's keep let's keep a little slack. So we need quite a few wires actually here. So one is gonna go to the other side, and then is gonna go to the one controller, say here and the other controller say here like that what's sticking out something sticking out one second so let's continue with the wire stuff so what am I doing right I'm just thinking of how do I want to bridge things so this needs to be quite short very short actually so around that gonna need another one and then I'll do the ground and that will be the ground will be my kill switch so I'm gonna I'll work on that in a second so this can be revealed like that okay and then I'll need another one just where is it so how much wire do I need not much but I like leaving me some slack so let's do this and we're gonna bridge them all together like that. I know it looks a bit messy but you'll get it in a second one when I show you what I'm doing. So now we wanna, let's put some solder on onto the actual battery. So remember the battery is inserted in my circumstance. And when we start doing this, when we start melting it, this actually will help fixate these pins in their position and remember do not touch the other pin otherwise it will shorten the battery causing it to go flat instantly which I've done many times but yeah also with these pins 
you have to hold it for a second or two before it starts to attach the solder. Okay, the solder is attached. That's good. I'm going to put some solder on this as well, actually. It will help fuse things easier and quicker. good so let's connect it up somehow even though it's a bit messy so this will go yeah basically like that this will go up top and that will go to the back so how do we do this so I think maybe like this and let's cut it off cut off any two it's a bit too excessive so I'm cutting it off there. so it's a bit tricky here so I'm gonna try to hold it like this and solder it on can you guys see alright? One second, I want to make sure you guys see. Well, yep, it looks like you can. Okay, so. There we go. I need a more solder actually, so. Let's get a bit more. Looks like a good amount. Get back here. Good. There we go, perfect. Let it cool down a bit. And then go to the other side. I'm gonna retwist this. I didn't like the twist before. Put some solder on. Actually, this will go, need to go into a buck converter first, not these chips. So where's our buck converter? So we've got a got this I need to remember that so it's gonna go through that before it goes to anything else so anyway but let's connect it so it's in parallel first okay. Cut off excess. and the positive yeah is on the other side Okay, I made a bit of a mistake here, but it will still reach fine. There we go. Okay, now these are good. And then we'll do the negative, just basically bridging them all together. So the exact same principle from the, for the negative or the ground. So we've got a ground wire. Don't like this dirt. Why is this dirt there? Okay, there we go. That's good. So let's. Gonna reveal more copper. It's not copper. It's not copper just wire, I don't know what kind of wire it is. Actually I need another bridge, don't I? Because it's gonna go to a converter. Which I'm not sure, maybe it could sit in the middle. Lock converter. Because the LEDs are here, so the lock converter could be here maybe. So one side will go to the other side. I'm just thinking, these did, I didn't need two wires. I'll need two wires after the buck converter, so. Okay, that's a mistake I made. So I don't need two wires just yet, so I'm gonna clip this off. That'll be fine like that. Okay, so that to that, and I only need one wire going long, which is here. So I'll have three wires here, in one. It's always like this when I do this uh, Buster Sword Electronics, like I get lost a little bit. Even though it's, it's very simple, like circuit. Okay. There's 
too long again. So cut it off a little bit. down that's good to me and the other side goes to the other side of course and then we're gonna have a little voltage reading to make sure that I'm getting a connection it's way too long quite annoying that the shorter it is the harder it is to strip we can have a little voltage reading to make sure that the battery is picking up basically and actually I'll need to reel the wires here okay so turn my voltmeter on do you guys need to see or will you trust my word <laughs> so positive is red Negative is black. We have a reading, 8.2 volts, perfect. So now we need to go into a buck converter to reduce the voltage to 5 volts. 